is the public hearing on the 2014 budget. If you would all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Councilwoman Esley? Present. Councilman Morasco? Councilman Perticone? Here. Councilwoman Scrobach? Here. Supervisor Derizio? Here. Thank you. Upon the matter of request to adopt the 2014 budget. And I would like a motion, please, to open the public hearing. Yes, ma'am. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Our first speaker is Robert Ament. Good evening, residents of Ronicoy. This is in regards to the 2014-2014 budget ways to save money and to make adjustments. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the exercise, the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. I do thank our founding fathers for giving this right to speak tonight and it's an honor to be here. First, I address the attorney's fees for 2014. Um, 2012, I believe it was almost half a million dollars. It's outrageous. I would ask that you hire a corporate attorney, readjust the budget for 2014, a full-time corporate attorney retained, allow them to hire a paralegal if necessary. You could pay a salary of 125000 for the attorney and forty five dollars for his paralegal, and you'll still save upwards of $300,000-plus. It's imperative we retain good counsel to eliminate the embarrassment of failing to follow simple New York State law again and again. Not only is this a monumental waste of taxpayer dollars, but it does reflect poorly on our town. I also would ask that you set aside a sum of no less than $50,000 and no greater than $350,000 in the 2014 budget, specifically to reimburse Mike and Wendy Nolan for unnecessary and pointless <coughs> delays they suffered for the I-Square project including excess attorney fees and redundant engineering designs incurred during your months of long delays of that project. <clears throat> also, along that note, I would ask the board to consider a cease and desist order to refrain from any further business transactions, any meetings with town attorneys, engineers, etc., until the new board is sworn in. That could save hundreds of thousands of dollars for the 2014 budget at the rate you run up those bills. If the library vote passes, it seems only ethical that all bidding awards be delayed until Adam Bello can take over to ensure ethical bidding processes and expenditures of public monies as followed. The attorney could also be appointed as a czar. So you're hiring this attorney for 2014, set that money aside. That's an independent attorney, um, a non-political post to make sure that those monies for the library would be actually bid following municipal rules, which has not been followed with this board. <clears throat> I also ask that you cancel any rentals of McAvoy Park to out-of-town schools and groups that, uh, and allow Aronicway clubs and teams full use of this facility at no cost on a first-come, first-served basis from open till close, 9 a.m. till 10 p.m. I did ask this years ago, four years ago, and discussed this with the supervisor. This was never done. In 2014, although we will incur um, a negative uh, income from that, we can offset those monies with our savings from the attorneys, wasted attorney's fees. <clears throat> I also ask that you cancel the 2014 swearing-in ceremony, the money you set aside for that, expenditures, what have you, saving on energy costs and police overtime. Since the entire episode seems to be like a charade and swearing on a Bible should only be executed in a for or forthright manner. Possible savings, $700. You can have Judge Janier, who I respect highly, come, he can come down and do it in private. If they want to have a public affair, have them go to their homes. I was very displeased with a 33% raise for the supervisor. I don't know if that's already begun or if that's budgeted for 2014. 
considering I can't think of a single accomplishment from the last four years that have impacted my family in a positive manner. Finally, I ask the entire town board to consider donating part or all of your salaries for the remainder of 2013 to cover the wasted attorney's fees and blatant bid rigging for the Pine Grove Roof Project and apply that to the 2014 budget. In fact, why not cease any further activity or decisions and ask Mr. Bell to start his transmission, uh, transition immediately. <clears throat> On a positive note, in celebration of this week's <coughs> events, cake is being served after the meeting, compliments of taxpayers, saving an additional $17.65. Shame on you all. Moving on. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> I think he brought it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not at taxpayers' expense, believe me. <sighs> Jeff Goldblatt, please. Good evening, Jeff Goldblatt, 128 <clears throat> Parkside Crescent. Sadly, I welcome you to the 22nd presentation of the shopping list of savings. As in the past, and for purposes of clarity, I may mention certain companies by name. I do not have any financial or employment relationship with any such firm. We'll begin with information technologies, and I'll be going in order as these items appear in the budget, for more or less. Uh, between certain problems that have been discovered recently without a date, material on the town's website, along with the failure to include information I suggested last year, including the slowdown to get around public safety program, as well as uh, solid waste information, which continues to be lacking. I would suggest that this particular portion of information services be bid out. Please, oh please, do not use the firms that were involved in the rollout of so-called Obamacare. Under the police, uh, I see that in this coming year's budget, we are looking to purchase three new police cars, which is fine. I would again suggest, and this comes from the December 26th, uh, 2011 edition of the Buffalo News, uh, the possible sponsorship of one or more of these police cars. Uh, in the town of Littleton, Massachusetts, they did this with a grocery chain called Donnellan's, where they put a very discreet uh, bumper sticker on the rear quarter of the police car, which helps defray the cost. Uh, they're doing this as a $12,000 a year contract uh, to pay for one of their cars. And according to their chief, John Kelly, and I quote, my position is I have to give my officers the tools to provide the necessary services our residents pay for. At 2.30 in the morning, somebody lying on a local highway because of an accident really doesn't care who's paying for the cruiser or what it says on the side. I realize this is something new for Monroe County, and especially for the town of Irondequoit, but given the fiscal position that we're in, it would be a way to help defray the cost. I still also would suggest, and again, this has nothing to do with how good or bad our police do. They do a fine job. But given the, uh, the economic outlook for not only upstate New York, but the rest of the country, which is unfortunately not positive, we still need to have the International Association of Chiefs of Police give us a study as to what our options are going forward. Whether we remain where we're at, whether we make some sort of change, I still believe it would be a prudent way for us to spend our money. Community development. One of the many things that they're tasked with doing includes fire prevention, building construction, and property maintenance. And that brings us to a situation that has been festering in town for quite some time. A year ago, on hip letterhead and over my signature, we submitted a lengthy report about the conditions surrounding around Aquate Plaza, which has been a scar for many, many years and two blocks over from a multi-million dollar redevelopment. Nothing happened. Couldn't figure out why we hadn't gotten a, a, any kind of response. So I wiped the dust off of my detective's gold shield and did a little investigating and found out what happened. And there's a point to this. The point is, in the building department, there are not enough people to go around in order to handle issues such as this. 
In all these years, I have never advocated cutting jobs, and only then as a last resort. Instead, I've been outlining all these other things. Had this been given a high priority as it should have been, some of these issues that we laid out would have been resolved by now. In particular, since this all began on August 9, 2005, when the first submittal was made from the then owners, we now have a public safety issue in regards to disease-carrying birds, which has gotten out of control. County Mr. Goldblatt, could you please keep your comments to the budget itself? I'm getting to that, madam, if, I, if you would please. Uh, Just curtail your sidebars and get to the actual budget lines sure. you'd like to address. Yes. Thank you. Uh, in terms, and that was going to be my second next sentence, but I'll move it up. This is costing you tax pair dollars as far as sales tax because this facility is not being as visited by as many people as it used to be. Therefore, positions in the, in that have been cut in the building department need to be restored in order to resolve this and other day-to-day -day issues. Continuing with that and going to building code enforcement. We have the this, same numbers we've ever had. <laughs> this has been another weak link in the chain and has cost the town and could cost the town potential money, starting with house numbers. It's only a matter of time since this went on the book in 1991 that there has not been a tragedy which this town would wind up paying dearly for if, if emergency services cannot find a particular house. Also there's the issue of missing dumpster enclosures. Again, it would be a one-time revenue hit, but you cannot have a situation where some businesses are in compliance with the code and other businesses are not. Again, there are not enough people involved right upstairs from us to take care of this work. Removal of violations. While the gentleman involved in uh, taking care of high grass and weeds and so forth and uh, taking care of town properties do a fine job, it's a cost that could be turned over to the private sector. There are plenty of small and large sized firms that are capable of doing this work. At that point then, with a contract or contract signed, the surplus equipment can be sold and the men involved with this work reassigned. Um, I have to remind you that many of the things you suggest we are not allowed to do during, due to our collective bargaining agreements. I'm not also suggesting that these things can be done overnight, but things that need to be addressed but, going you forward. Know, you know. I understand. I've been doing this for a very long time. So have I. Parks and Recreation, not as long as me. The uh, good news to report is I uh, recently had a conversation with Mr. O'Brien, uh, who reached out in regards to the condition of Joshua Park. I'm glad to see that my tax dollars are going to be used to not only uh, refurbish the uh, monument signs, but to also eliminate the, uh, the gravel pits that have been in existence and have never been used. Uh, and I'm told that this work will be completed in the spring. I can tell you up to this point in time, as I go through this area constantly, were I a member of the Rojas family, I would not be very pleased. There's also the matter of, and I'll talk about the town's refuse and recycling bin in a moment, uh, one of the things that does need to be addressed is how uh, refuse and recycling is handled at the site between the peeling pails of, uh, of garbage, uh, the equipment that really isn't necessary to be utilized, there are cost savings to be had as part of the overall rework of the refuse and recycling bid. The cemetery. While it may be a nice thing to have, uh, it is something given the economic climate that we're in that I believe is a luxury that we can no longer afford. Uh, there is a publicly held company called Stonemore who works not only with private firms, municipalities, and dioceses around the country as far as the running of uh, funeral homes, cemeteries, and the like, who I would suggest needs to come in uh, and take a look to see if this if the acquisition of uh, our cemetery, either under a joint operating agreement or an outright tuck-in acquisition, would be worthwhile. The cost over the years has been ranging anywhere from 200 to two over a quarter of a million dollars, and that would represent a significant savings on an operating basis above and beyond the uh, land value involved. I'm going to use the libraries to jump off and now discuss the town's refuse and recycling bid to A, clear up uh, a piece of misinformation and to point out one particular line item as far as revenue is concerned. Earlier in the year during the discussions 
uh, about the libraries, uh, the statement was repeatedly made by the library's uh, financial expert uh, that there, and implying that repeatedly that there would be savings involved as far as shared services when it comes to trash. Uh, I thought that was incorrect and wanted to get a copy of the updated bid, which after the second floor seemed to be confused about, I was able to secure through a third party. No, not one of the companies. They're not that helpful. But be that as it may, there was no change in the bid. Uh, and had the person involved, who sadly is no longer with us, although while I didn't know her very well, my condolences, I knew her uncle extremely well, former vice president of Local 503 of the Graphic Arts Union and my lead novelty stripper at Great Lakes Press in Rendall. Nonetheless, a quick look at the bid, which is not laid out in any kind of legalese, would show that each property and each building is costed out and then everything is added together jointly. That's how the bid is set up. So there is no shared services when it comes to trash. It's interesting to note, however, that since 2006, the cost of this has gone up on a grand total basis by $4,355. We're supposed to be keeping a close eye on these things. Doesn't seem too very close to me. Uh, the way to achieve savings is to have, unlike what was attempted before, department heads and maintenance people property by property to say, here's what you have. If we were to change to fill in the blank, would you be okay with this? If not, why not? Then you can assemble a new bid package. You should be able to get at least four bids. That should generate some savings on an operating basis as well. Also interestingly, interesting to point out, under revenue, 05 triple 05 to 705 is a line called fundraising, which is fairly new in the last couple of years. And I see when I take out my calculator, I find that between 2,230, 400, 5,000, and next year 2,500, I come up with a figure of 10,130. Doesn't seem terribly aggressive to me. And before someone says, well, what do you think you should do about it? Or how could you help? Is this under the library to which you are referring? Yes. Uh, I tried. August 2006. I went before the library board and presented the Lakewood funding plan. Rather aggressive plan, and this came courtesy of an article that appeared in the Buffalo News. Besides a rather aggressive program to fund the expansion and renovations of their existing libraries, uh, this was implemented quite quickly and the results were positive. It's also interesting to note that their library just happens to be the same vintage as ours. There's a lesson in there someplace I don't know where. Building maintenance. Again, this is not a meeting about how good or bad the gentlemen who work for us do. They all do a fine job. However, in terms of cost, over the years, this has ranged anywhere from 300 to over 330 some odd dollars. I would again suggest that this needs to be bid out. And uh, I would again suggest, and there's other firms obviously that you can take a look at, but this happens to be quite a reputable one called the Midnight Janitorial. State Women Certified Owned Business. They've won any number of awards. They're involved with a number of community groups. This or other such firms might be able to reduce that cost significantly. Solid waste management, my favorite subject. Here we have some good news and some not so good news. The good news is after several years of complaining about the fact that not all the companies who operate in, Monroe, in, in, in Irondequoit uh, are not, are, have not been licensed. I was informed just this past week that finally more of a concerted effort is going to be made in order to get everyone licensed in. You cannot have a situation just like with dumpster enclosures I mentioned earlier where some entities are in compliance with the law and others aren't. So hopefully by this time next year, that may be the second item to finally come off of the list after all these years. Additionally, in the not so new good news category, as I'm sure most of you know that after 50 years, Heberly Disposal ceased to exist on January 31st and was acquired by Waste Management. So the following Monday, I immediately raced out to see my CID Enterprise Waste Management and part-time around quite resident George to ask what was going to happen with the trucks. And he informed me that most of them were going to be scrapped out, except for a few. 
And since I knew which ones were the pick of the litter, I immediately sent a note to Public Works suggesting to check out the following three trucks, which I did. Then the following week, I get a, uh, my current edition of Waste and Recycling News, uh, their truck issue, and the case becomes a little bit more interesting. According to Waste Management spokesperson Jennifer Andrews... Can you get to the line item that you'd like to address, please, Mr. Goldblatt? I'm talking about... I'm talking about Residential yard waste. That's okay, where I'm so going to. just get to the point of what you'd like the budget yes. line to do. Bear with me. Their spokesman indicated that, and I quote, I know there are cases where we donate trucks to nonprofit entities where they are needed, where we don't feel the truck is up to our standards and someone could put it for good use. I sent that information up to Public Works, and since those trucks are not here, I can only conclude that we missed for the second time an opportunity to, re to regain compactor capacity on our fleet. Why is this important? When we were working on uh, the townwide uh, tree grant, which is some of those trees are starting to show up now with public works, it was indicated that a lot of people in town like the compost and wood chip uh, give back that we have uh, in place. Uh, had these trucks been secured, that could have been started as far as collecting that material in the spring where there is no curbside source separation. And in fact, I would again point out in the little town of Bethlehem, New York, uh, that besides allowing the, their, their residents free service, they also make a little money for commercial and non-residential rates. So you could conceivably, by being more aggressive in this regard, uh, make some money if not defray the cost. Proof once again that Kermit the Frog was right. It's not easy being green. The tree program. Going forward, replacing the trucks that you have with the same size trucks does not generate a cost savings. It's the same size trucks doing the same size work. As those trucks need to be replaced going forward, I would again suggest the company that we've been buying these from, Peterson Industries, makes a larger size truck. This is a 40 yard size. That truck run on natural gas and with tires filled by nitrogen instead of oxygen then represents a significant cost savings and a productivity improvement townwide. Also as far as the collection of, uh, of other material that uh, the town processes such as bricks, concrete, etc. Again instead of running multiple trucks with multiple men uh, purchasing this particular hydraulic lift or getting trucks that are already outfitted with this and they do exist Again, it's a one-man, one-truck operation instead of multiple trucks and multiple men, again representing the cost savings. Furthermore, as far as the collection of brush is concerned, uh, there are any number of computer programs uh, where uh, scatter routes, which is what the, uh, the current town setup uh, does, by having people call in ahead of time, uh, these streets it can be mapped out so instead of running trucks up and down every single street in each quadrant throughout the year, maybe it's only half as many trucks. Again, it's a labor savings, it's a fuel savings. Highway 3. As we go forward and I see that there's heavy equipment on deck to be purchased, we need to lay the groundwork in order to turn to natural gas for, for driving our vehicles. Uh, as of September 23rd, and this comes from a company called Clean Energy, uh, there's still about a dollar per gallon comparative savings between diesel and compressed natural gas. Uh, this particular firm does all kinds of things, into, including grants and financing, uh, building the fueling stations, uh, vehicle conversions, etc. Uh, as any part of any rework in the back, as far as the, uh, the uh, highway building is concerned, we need to install a natural gas island as well as a nitrogen fueling pump for tires. And that's not, if you want to see how that works, the good folks at Dunn Tire can show you because they do that for their customers all the time. Also, dealing, also by changing the bid specs to include items such as uh, super wide single tires instead of doubles, uh, using retreads for the non-steering portions of your heavy truck vehicles, again, it's still without compromising any safety or vehicle performance, uh, does wind up saving money in the long run.
one too many things. Under the sewer districts, <clears throat> a year ago I, point, I pointed out and have still not, and I know I won't get an answer to, uh, custom made manhole covers. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago I was up on Ridge Road, which thankfully is finally finished, and saw a number of manhole covers on those brand new nice sidewalks that say MC Traffic, of course not to be confused with MC Hammer. And the question I would raise this year is if oh. block type is good enough, <laughs> I thought I'd try to slide that by. You know, a spoonful of sugar helps the agit go down. Yeah, but Jeff, it's already 7.30. I'm just about done. There's no one else here speaking. Uh, nonetheless, if block type is good enough for Monroe County, I don't know why it's not good enough for us. Mr. Goldblatt, I'm quite confident last year our um, uh, uh, Department of Public Works Commissioner emailed you that it doesn't cost us one penny extra to have that. It's the exact same I, price to have the logo. Madam I Councilwoman, was, I never received any communication from Oh, anyone. well, he, he, he copied me in on it. If you didn't get it, I'm sorry, but I can assure you he checked into it that very next day, and it doesn't cost the town of Aranda quite one penny to have the logo on it, so that should bring you some comfort. Thank you very much. I appreciate that information. Mm -hmm. uh, a year late, but nonetheless. Well, um, I don't think so, since uh, he did email you. I was on the email, and we did actually announce it at the next month's meeting from the dais. Nice trick, so. because I don't use email. But be that as it may, custom-made <laughs> custom covers are something that no one sees. I understand the theory behind this, which is the possibility of theft. I get it. But there's a simpler way to do it, and is all I wanted to point out. Lastly, Seabreeze Water District, and I see a couple of interesting line items here under revenue. Delinquent water receipts, 64000 penalties and water rent. I know you can rent any kind of beverage. There's a joke. I won't do it. That's $109,000. It's like, here we go again. And it is also my understanding that we now have, as of this calendar year, all of the bonds paid off or are in the process of doing so. Uh, this is something that there may have been some value to at one point in time. Uh, I don't know what that is now. Nonetheless, what is your concern with the rental property? Uh, penalties involving water rent. 2148 okay. is the line item I'm looking at. Okay. And what's the matter with that? If there are penalties involved, that's outstanding. That's revenue that, that needs to be collected. And it is. Good. We have been able, in the last two years, increase the cash flows at the Seabreeze Water District to a very positive water supply for those customers. That's, okay. that's, that's good to know, but nonetheless, uh, while there may have been some rationale for this at one point in time, I will argue, given the troubles that that entity has had the last few years, though possibly corrected by now, uh, is something that is probably... Uh, under the circumstances, something that could be looked at. And in fact, on an operating cost basis, it's almost closing in on a million dollars on an annual basis. Nonetheless, now that the bonds are on the verge or have been paid off, I would again suggest either a tuck in acquisition with the Monroe County Water Authority or thanks to CNBC, we now have two other options either American Water Works or Aqua America as firms that we. We're not in a position to do that. I'm only the treasurer of the Seabreeze Water District. It's up to the customers and their commissioners. Okay? Then I'm publicly stating that's something for them to consider. Good. Yeah. Thanks. And that would have to be held by a public referendum. I understand that, too. Great. But it is a helpful suggestion, and it should be thought about. I appreciate that. And that concludes my comments. Thank, Thank you. We have a town board workshop next Wednesday, a regular town board meeting on November 19th, and do not forget the library referendum vote on Saturday, December 14th at St. Cattery at Christ the King from 9 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock at night. If you are unable to um, vote on that day, be sure to obtain an absentee ballot. And I don't think we have anything else for this evening, so I would like to entertain a motion to um, adjourn the public hearing. 
Yes. And a second, please. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And then let us adjourn from the special town board meeting for the budget hearing. Motion, please. Yes, ma'am. So moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you for coming tonight. We hope you enjoyed this presentation of the Arondacoit Town Board on ICAT 12, Arondacoit's Government Access Channel.